your side, would you open us in prayer? Good Father God, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've been and all that you've always helped us do, God. And, uh, you always will be there for us, Lord, and we thank Amen. you for that. We pray, God, for those who are without you, Lord, and then they come to know you soon. Yes. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for all the showers and blessings, God, that you've given us. Yes. Help us to always remember them, even in the dark times, Lord. Yes. Bless the service down in Christ's name. Amen. 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 All right, if you grab your Bibles with me this morning, turn with me to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. If you remember the story of Cornelius, how he, uh, I guess, had a vision and and, and Peter had a vision telling him to go, and there was a man he was going to preach to, right? And uh, so Peter comes, and this, this man's a Gentile, uh, and uh, yet pre Peter, Peter, he was a preacher, right? I keep getting Peter and preacher mixed up. But Peter came preaching to him the Word of God, and we're going to start in verse 34. And read to verse 43, and if you will, stand with me in reverence to God's Word. Amen. In Acts chapter 10, verse 34, Peter preaches to Cornelius, saying, Then Peter <coughs> opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee, after the baptism of jo uh, which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and dead, to give him, or to him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Yeah. And the title of the message this morning is Judge of the Quick and Dead. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word. We just pray that you would just uh, open our the eyes of our understanding, Lord, that we might be enlightened with your truth today. Lord, that you would speak to our hearts and, and uh, just strengthen us in the faith. Lord, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, Lord, that is due unto your holy and righteous name. Forgive us where we fail you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. You may be seated. <coughs> so the judge... <laughs> of quick and dead. <laughs> and we know quick there means alive, right? He's the judge of the live and dead. And you can take this two different ways. Uh, he's the judge of those who are still living and those who are, have, have died. But yet he is also the judge of those who are alive spiritually and those who are dead spiritually. Mm -hmm. uh, he is the judge of all, in other words. Uh, there is none that will not come under His judgment uh, in that day. Yeah. Why? Because He is the one that God uh, ordained uh, and, and proved it by raising Him from the dead. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's how He proved that this man, uh, Jesus, was the Christ whom He had ordained, whom He had promised since the world began yeah. that would come uh, and be the sacrifice for our sins that we might receive remission of sins, as Peter preached here, uh, that through His name, whosoever believe in Him shall have uh, or receive remission of sins. Mm -hmm. And so He is the only 
uh, righteous judge that we will have that will judge those who are the quick and the dead, those who are alive and those who are dead, those who are uh, reborn and those who have not. And he starts, I want to start where he pre uh, preached, uh, saying of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Uh, you know, that, that tells us there that he's a righteous judge, amen? Uh, yeah. That he is a just judge and that he seeks justice uh, and, and justice by truth, amen? Uh, that he is not a uh, respecter of persons, that he uh, approves someone over someone else because of who they are. Uh, but as, as he said, again, whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed, amen? amen? Because it is the righteousness of Christ that we need in our lives <laughs> in order to be uh, right with God in order to uh, be justified uh, before our uh, Creator. And so I say that this morning because we live in a world uh, today that is a post-truth era and that uh, we live in a time where it is the respect of, of persons uh, that drives the beliefs and the uh, ideals of this society that we live in is the respect of persons. It's, it's that idea that, well, uh, you know, you cannot believe something or say something uh, that is going to go against someone's person. In other words, <clears throat> hurt their feelings, right? Well, this hurts my feelings. I'm offended by this. Therefore, you don't, you, uh, it, it is wrong for you to say it. It's wrong for you to think that way. It's wrong for you to believe that way because it hurts my feelings. Well, that's having the respect of persons, isn't it? Uh, before uh, the respect of God and His truth. And that's where we live in today. But God is not a respecter of persons. He's going to judge uh, everyone according to their works. Amen. Amen. According uh, to the truth of His Word. And Jesus said it. Uh, you know, when he was here, he said, I, I, I'm not going to judge you, but the words that I speak, they're going to judge you, amen? amen? Because we are all going to be judged by this right here, mm -hmm. the Word of God. You read in Revelation, when that day comes, the judgment seat of Christ says the books, plural, were open. Mm -hmm. Well, what books do you think he's talking about? I believe it's the 66 books yeah. of the Bible, amen, yeah. that he is talking about. They're going to be open that... <laughs> Uh, the whole world is going to be judged by. Mm -hmm. And it is that in which we stand today. Amen. It's that that we judge ourselves today according to the Word of God. If we are one of His. If we're not one of His, again, we judge the truth that we believe or the uh, uh, ideals that we have based on our feelings, based on the other's feelings. And so, you know, you can't stand up. There's places today where if you stand up and preach Romans chapter 1 uh, in which, and many other places in the Bible in which God uh, uh, speaks against homosexuality uh, and sodomy. Let's just call it what it is. Uh, when you preach against sodomy and sodomites uh, that you would be uh, put in prison. You say, well, where is that happening? Well, uh, parts of Canada, if you stand up against homosexuality and speak up against it, it's considered a hate crime, you can go to jail. They're trying to get that here in America. In fact, the Congress is going uh, here before long and bringing forth a bill against hate speech uh, as a crime in America. Hopefully it won't get passed, but if it does, it could be that in America, standing up and preaching against sin and sinners might uh, uh, put you in prison. Uh, and it's, it's no surprise to us to see that uh, part of our society today has gone toward, towards uh, socialism and communism, uh, that it's going to be that way because it happened to the Jews in World War II. First, they began to be ridiculed and laughed at. And then they began to be uh, you know, uh, talked against and, 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 and to, uh, preached tolerance uh, from them uh, for everyone else. And then that began something in, to be that they were persecuted and hated. 
Uh, and then they were imprisoned. And then, once they were imprisoned, they began to be killed. It's going to be the same way for the Christians. Uh, first, we're ridiculed, right? We're laughed at. We're made fun of because of the things that we believe and the stances that we take upon the Word of God. Well, that's moving towards now uh, that we are being told uh, that we are to be tolerant of those that uh, we preach against or believe against, right? Everyone's, uh, every Christian is commanded that we need to be tolerant of everyone's sin. And yet, they are not tolerant of Christians, right? Mm -hmm. We see that beginning to happen. Well, before long, it's going to be that, that uh, we are considered to be hateful. And once we are be considered to be hateful and, and evil, and they call that which is good evil and that which is evil good, then we're going to be started to be looking at as being uh, unlawful mm -hmm. and put in prisons. And once that happens, then we're going to be persecuted the sense of they're going to start putting us to death because we stand upon the truth of God's Word. Yeah. But I promise you this, as God is no respecter of persons, neither should we be. Amen? That we should stand upon the truth of God's Word no matter who we're preaching to, who yeah. we're talking right. to, who we're dealing with, even with ourselves. Amen? Uh, we ourselves are not held to a different standard than we hold everyone else around us. Because it is the standard that we hold which is the Word of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. And we are to hold forth that standard uh, even when it comes to the point of our lives being in jeopardy. But praise God that we serve a God that is no respecter of persons. In Jude, it speaks of this. Of those who have men's persons in admiration. In Jude... Verses 14 through 21, it says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own godly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Yeah. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating either, even the garment spotted, by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Oh, what comfort that is. Amen. Amen. That we serve a God. We serve a risen Savior who is able to keep us from falling. Who is able to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. Amen. With exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. We live in a society today, and it's nothing new, but yet it is something that we are dealing with nonetheless, that they have men's persons in admiration because of advantage. They have pushed truth. Uh, there is no truth today, only uh, what feels right. Only what feels good. And that's what drives people's uh, minds today is that they look upon the person as being God. And it is the uh, 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 belief that it is man who uh, is able to save man in which they are living today thinking that it is by our own hand 
that we are going to save us. Uh, and it is not by our own hand. It is by the hand of God. Amen? Yeah. That is, it is by His right hand, which is Jesus Christ, that we are saved. And it is by His Word, amen, that He has sent forth to uh, revive us, to quicken us, and make us alive. Psalm chapter 15. Psalm chapter 15. He says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. Amen. Speaketh the truth in his heart. I want you to, to hold on to that. Amen. Because we need to speak truth to our own hearts. Amen. Yeah. We need allow, to allow the truth of the Word of God to convict us, in other words, of sin, righteousness, and judgment. You see, the world does not want that. Amen? They separate themselves from the truth. They separate themselves from anything that would cause them to become offended, that would cause them to come under conviction of the Holy Spirit because they do not want that conviction in their life. They do not want someone else telling them uh, the truth uh, stands uh, in objection to the way that they live. They want the truth to be uh, subjective unto them, that they can change it to mean what they want it to mean so that they can live the way they want to live. And yet the truth is objective. It is true. It was true then. It is true now. And it will be true forevermore. Wow. He that backbiteth not with his tongue nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes, in whose eyes, a vile person is contemned. Amen? You know, it is something to stand up and say, this is wrong. Amen? Uh, whether it hurts someone's feelings or not, in whose eyes a vile person is condemned. They're wrong. They are wrong. But He honoreth them that fear the Lord. Amen. Those who are living according to truth are praised and honored. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. Man. That stands on the truth, whether it's going to cause him to lose business whether it's going to cause him to lose companionship, whether it's going to cause him to lose safety and peace in his life, but it, he will stand upon the truth to his own hurt. Man. And I tell you what, there's a lot of people who have changed their belief system or changed the, the, uh, 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 from standing upon what's right and what's true uh, because they want uh, someone's business or they want someone's companionship where they want the praise of men instead of the praise of God. Amen. He that putteth not out his money to usury nor taketh reward against the innocent, he that doeth these things shall never be moved. Amen. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28 and verses 21 through 23. It says, To have respect of persons is not good. For, for a piece of bread that man will transgress. <laughs> Isn't God good? Mm -hmm. We talked about this morning in Sunday school. Esau, who sold his birthright for a morsel of meat. He had respect of persons, didn't he? In other words, he cared about his own person. He cared about his own pleasure in the moment more than the promise of God. And that he in that moment being hungered to the point he felt like he was starving was willing 
to satisfy his flesh instead of keeping himself for the promise and righteousness of God and sold it. And this says, for a piece of bread that man will transgress. Mm -hmm. Just for pleasure they transgress. Just so that, you know, uh, uh, we uh, murder babies in, the, in this country today for convenience. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And I want you to look at that baby, and you've all seen him this morning, that precious <coughs> little baby. They kill those uh, babies in a, in a manner which is gruesome and vile. And they kill babies in the, in the thought of convenience. Mm -hmm. Well, this child is going to inconvenience the mother, and so therefore it is deemed worthy to be murdered. Mm -hmm. And they try to justify it, and they try to uh, uh, soothe their conscience by saying, well, it's not really a life, and, and, and they come up with all the excuses, and yet God looks down, and He's angry with the sinner every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen? And yet we want to say, oh, well, you can't tell another woman what she can do with her body. I'm here to tell you it is murder. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. And we can say what is right. We can stand upon the truth because we are not having the respect of any person but the respect of God and what He says in His Word is true. Amen. And that is what we will stand upon. To have respect of persons is not good for a piece of bread that man will transgress. He that hasteth to be rich hath an evil eye, and considereth not that poverty shall come upon him. He that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flattereth with the tongue. It is better to rebuke. Amen? It is better to rebuke. Yeah. Because there is the favor of God to stand upon truth. Because God is no respecter of persons. And if we are, we do no man a service. Amen. But to cause more to fall into wickedness. Amen. He says, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted of him. Amen. In every nation, he that feareth God and worketh righteousness. Uh, I talked a little bit, uh, I can't remember what message it was about hungering and thirsting after righteousness. In other words, hungering and thirsting after that which is right. To the point that you're seeking after that which is right. That which God says is right. We sang the song this morning, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. What He says is right. Amen. And if we are going to follow and work righteousness, amen, that means to seek God's way and not our way. Amen. That means not to lean on our own understanding or our own feelings or our own wants, our own pleasure, but to lean upon what God says in His Word is acceptable. Amen. And that is acceptable to God. Look at Genesis chapter 4. We also talked about Abel. Amen. We're going to talk about him this morning. We talked about Esau. We're going to talk about Abel. One of the things that Damon said in, in the uh, Sunday school lesson that I'd never thought about is the, the blood of Abel cried out and the blood of Jesus is crying out today. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that thought that Abel was killed for the gift that he gave being more acceptable than the gift Cain gave. Mm -hmm. Because he gave that which God required. Amen. Right? Abel was... His blood was uh, spilled because of the gift he gave. And Jesus was... His blood was spilled... Because He was the gift. Amen. Amen. Oh, that wow. God gave to the whole world. What, what a thought that is. Amen. Amen. Uh, but it is the blood of Jesus Christ that God required. Amen. The blood of His own Son to wash away our sins. 
Genesis chapter 4 and verses 1 through 8 says, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his son Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat uh, thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Why? Because that's what the Lord required. Amen. Yeah. Was blood. Mm -hmm. A blood sacrifice. A blood offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect because it's not what he had required. Mm -hmm. And yet it's what Cain wanted to give. Yeah. Right? I tell you, we better make sure that what we give is what God requires. Amen. Yeah. And not just what we want to give. Amen. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Well, why? Because Cain's countenance fell because God had respect to Abel's offering and not his. And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they uh, were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. You see, it's always been those who stand on the right, amen, on the truth of the Word of God that has been under persecution from those who don't. Because it's a conviction unto them. It says first that they talked, right? Cain was very upset with Abel. Well, he should have been upset with himself. Because as, G as God said, If thou do well, shall thou not be accepted? Yes. In every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted of him. Amen? Yeah. That's the gospel. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah. That is the righteousness which God requires. Yeah. Is that we come to Jesus Christ in faith. Yeah. Psalm chapter 19. Psalm chapter 19 and verses 7 through 14, he says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Amen. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Oh, that we would not presume that we know what's right. Oh, that we would not presume that we know what God thinks. Oh, that we would pr not pr uh, uh, presume to know uh, uh, things that we have not studied. Listen, we need to get into the Word of God, amen, to know what God says, that we are not in presumptuous sin, to think that we're on the right path when we're not, amen, yeah. to think we're doing the right thing when we're not. Because I'm going to tell you, uh, we can think and, and, and have a desire to do that which is right and be doing everything that is wrong. Mm -hmm. Brother Damon read this morning in his uh, devotion. He said, my desire for Israel is that they might be saved. Uh, saved. Why? Because they have a zeal of God, but not according to righteousness. Mm -hmm. We can presume to know that which is right, but unless we know that we know that we know. Amen? And how do we know? Because of the Word of God. Yeah. Right. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright. Amen. 
When we know that we know that we know. Why? Because thus saith the Lord, then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Yeah. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Well, what is that going to be acceptable unto the Lord? Mm -hmm. His Word. Amen. Yeah. That which is right. That which, which is truth. Psalm chapter 85. That's why when we preach the gospel, we don't say, I believe this or I believe that because it's not about what we presume to be right or wrong. It's about what the Bible says. Yeah. That's why when we preach the Word of God, we say, the Bible says this, the Bible says that because it's what God says that matters. Yeah. That's why when I preach up here, I don't just preach one, uh, 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 read one verse and then spend the rest of my time talking because I don't want you to know what Brother Scott says. I want you to know what the Bible says. Amen. In Psalm chapter 85 and verse 8 through 13, he says, I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak. Amen. That's what I want to hear. Amen? Amen. I don't want to hear what man says. I don't want to hear what man has to think. I want to hear what God shall speak. For He will speak peace unto His people and to His saints. But let them not turn again to folly. Surely His salvation is nigh them that fear Him. The glo that glory may dwell in our sea and truth. Are we together? Oh, when you hear what God says. Amen. Amen. Yeah. When you, when you incline your ear unto Him, mercy and truth are met together. You see, it's the truth that we're sinners. Mm -hmm. Amen? It's the truth that we have broken God's law. <coughs> but it's mercy that God said, I love you. Amen? Amen? And I sent my Son to die for your sins. Amen. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. When we have the righteousness of Jesus Christ on us, then we have peace with God. Amen? Yeah. Because not of righteousness which we have done, but because now we have Jesus Christ who became our sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Yeah. <clears throat> Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Why, when? When we want to hear from God. Amen? When we want to hear what God says is right and what God says is wrong, and we begin to follow the righteousness of God, then He will give us that which is good. Then our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness, righteousness shall go before Him and shall set us in the way of His steps. Amen? Amen. When we have Jesus leading in our lives. When Jesus is at the center of our heart and our desire and our affection, then He is going to set us in the way of His steps. Yeah. In every nation, He that feareth Him and worketh righteousness is accepted of Him. And it says, and P Peter says, and He commanded us, to preach unto the people and to testify that it is He which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. You say, what's our authority? Jesus is our authority. Yeah. Amen. Because Jesus is that man mm -hmm. whom God ordained. Jesus is the man that God sent to bear our sins. And it's Jesus who is going to be the judge yeah. in the end. The judge of the quick and dead. Acts chapter 17. In verses 23 through 31, here we find Paul preaching at Berea in Athens. And he finds the uh, inscription 
to the unknown God, right? They, they uh, worship uh, the idols there. And they had one for an unknown God. They worshiped every idol, every God that they could think of. And they were so superstitious that here's one that they had made to the unknown God. Just so that they had all their bases covered. <laughs> And Paul preaches, starting in verse 23, For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Amen. <laughs> That'll grab your attention, amen. <laughs> I'm fixing to give you some wisdom here. <laughs> God, hath made, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should look that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might fill after him and find him though He be not far from every one of us. Amen. For in Him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are, all, for we are also His offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that God, the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Mm -hmm. Because He hath appointed a day in the which He will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom He hath ordained, whereof He hath given assurance unto all men and that He hath raised Him from the dead. Amen. Amen. Listen, there is appointed a day in which He will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. Right. He's coming again, and he will judge the world in righteousness, in truth, the truth of his word. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 10 through 12 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance, and not in heart. Mm -hmm. And what is that answer? That judgment is coming. Yeah. You can glory in appearance, you can glory in the personhood of man, and say, well, truth is what I want, truth is what I feel, truth is what I experience, but there is coming a day where you will stand before your Creator and you're going to be judged by the things that you have done or not done, whether they be good or bad. And you better know what those things are. Amen. Amen. But it's right here. It tells you. It's the handbook in which you're going to be judged by. Listen, there is coming judgment. Do you know that you know Amen. what you know? Amen. That's the question. Do you really know? People say, well, there is no God. And yet the question comes, how much of the universe would you say you know of? Right? <laughs> would you say you know everything in the universe there is? Well, if, if someone said that they did, they'd be just foolish to say so. There's no way we can there's no way we know every 100% of everything on this earth. 
They're finding stuff new on this earth all the time. And yet, you ask a person, well, would you say you know what? How much? 10% of everything that there is in the universe? I mean, that would be pushing it, probably. Is it not <laughs> conceivable that God can exist in that other 80% or 90% you don't know? You see, uh, <laughs> people uh, want to uh, think that they have it all figured out, but they don't. Mm -hmm. They want to think that they know it all, but they don't. And yet, if they will ever come to the point of knowing that they don't know, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm then they might see the truth that is in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And isn't that what Paul told us? He said, if anyone thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing as he ought to know. Mm -hmm. Right? Why? Because thinking that you know it all is a bad and shaky place to stand. Mm -hmm. But to humble yourself unto the Creator and say, teach me. No. Show me thy word. What? Let me hide thy word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Amen. Amen. Why? Because he is going to judge one day. Second Timothy chapter 4 and we'll be through. As for us here today <coughs> who believe the truth and pattern our lives after it. We have the warning and exhortation here in 2 Timothy chapter 4, starting in verse 1. He says, I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, whether it's popular, unpopular, whatever it is, be instant. Mm -hmm. In other words, be faithful. Amen. Preach the Word. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, telling them what they want to hear. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Yeah. And as he says in verse 7, I have fought a good fight. Amen. Mm -hmm. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love His appearing. Amen. Amen. And the only way we can love His appearing is if we love His truth. Amen. Amen. If we don't love His truth, we don't want Him to come. If we're not living His truth, if we're not standing upon His Word, we don't want Him to come because we're no, we know we're going to be judged. Right? But if we love His truth, if we love His Word, His law is our delight, then we love His appearing. Amen. We can't wait for Him to get here. Amen? Because we know we're standing on His truth. Amen. Not our truth, but the truth of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we thank You this morning. We just pray that You would use Your Word in our hearts, everyone that hears. Lord, may they have ears to hear. Lord, that they might hearken unto Your truth. That they might submit unto Your will. Lord, we just pray that You would continue to strengthen us, continue to grow us in Your grace. Lord, that we might put on the whole armor of God, being able to stand in the evil day, doing all to stand. We just pray that You would continue to grow this church in grace and faith and Lord, in the Spirit, Lord, that we might be light in this community, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Lord, we just pray that You would bless us, that You would strengthen us, and forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Our altar is open for those who want to pray as we sing this morning. Page 127. Sing all four verses. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. 127. <laughs>
worship you. Be with us. We would take out the, the offering and use it to your work and be with all the missionaries that we support and yes. protect them as they're preaching the gospel and leading people to you and starting up churches and give them the knowledge and the wisdom to do what you've had them to do in whatever yes. situation they might have. And, and give them the, the strength and the knowledge and the know-how to do what you'd have them to do. Yes. Forgive us of our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
All right, page 173. Love lifted me. 173.